So Narad is going to soon arrive <laughs> at Madra with a significant message carrying the word of fate in one sense not a very happy message in the another sense the futuristic message what is going to happen in future the futuristic message he is coming from his home in paradise what uh, the indian uh, puranas the traditions call vaikuntha he dwells in vaikuntha vaikuntha is the home of vishnu lord vishnu the creator creator and narad is actually the devotee of vishnu the creator's devotee and wherever he goes he keeps on singing the song of his vishnu praise of vishnu wherever he travels he keeps on singing the name of vishnu in fact that is what we have here also as a reference he sang with the name of vishnu in the book we have got the passage now the opening passage of naras arrival i uh, uh, consists of 83 lines in all 106.14 in other words 14 sentences 14 sentences naras coming to the earth and entering the palace is a description presented to us in uh, 83 lines and uh, the total number of sentences is uh, 16 14 the passage is very lyrical very sweet and at the same time it moves very rapidly very swiftly from description to description the movement is very rapid and it is as if a kind of a breathless journey of narad sweeping through all the spaces and jumping down and coming to the earth you see <coughs> at the same time behind that lyrical sweetness there is the intensity of calm there is the intensity of light and you feel his presence his perfume his fragrance his light everywhere while he's coming down he is bringing something very sweet something very helpful to the earth it is in that context you can see that things although he is carrying a very unpalatable word of fate you see <laughs> but the sweetness is very very enchanting here in saran bounds bordering the mortal's plain crossing a wide expanse of brilliant peace narad the heavenly sage from paradise came chanting to the large and lustrous air that is the beginning four line sentence stanza in silent bounds not accessible to us kept away from our view from our senses from our perception and as if therefore it is a kind of a silence you see bordering the mortal's plain which also means that those bounds those regions those realms are very close to the earth very close to the earth mortal's plane now he uses the word plane but actually it also conveys a sense of uh, world brutyolo the world or death earth is called the brutyo loka earth is where death is present so he comes to the mortal world brutyo loka in the sense and of course he comes from crossing a wide expanse of brilliant peace now crossing a wide expanse of brilliant of course the peace is brilliant 
and he is stepping from that brilliant peace to our world of noise and turmoil and quarrels and fights and struggle and death and ignorance is that so he is already indicating the contrast between what is there where from he is coming and what is here the poet is already preparing us yes he is coming from that world to our world of mortality where there is struggle strife death and things like that narad the heavenly sage from paradise paradise of course here is a general term but it specifically applies to his home that is vaikuntha narad sushi came chanting to the large and lustrous air now this is the whole thing wherever narad goes he keeps on singing chanting narayana narayana the name of vishnu he keeps on chanting all the while narayana narayana all the while he keeps on chanting his name we are at once introduced to the sage who has stepped out from his home in paradise he is in the far off blissful home as we are told at the end of the book far off blissful home something impels him and immediately he prepares himself to undertake the long and arduous downward journey why he is coming why he is chanting why he is singing there is something in him which is kind of driving him he must go he must go he is presently approaching mrityu loka the world of death that is earth this is where things happen the world that is under the sway of death the world of we grieving mortals he has left behind the realm of luminous peace but even while he is on his way to this world he is constantly singing the calm is in calm major the name of vishnu the name of vishnu that is narayana 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 means who is the nara means man lord of that is narayana 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 the bright sky is filled with the chant by as is coming down you see now the we can also see that there is a kind of a connection between the mission he has undertaken and this song when he is chanting the song of the lord it means that it is a kind of an auspicious thing which is going to happen to our senses perceptions understanding it may look calamitous but there is something going to be auspicious out of that event and therefore the atmosphere of joy and happiness and peace and brilliance that is there all the way through so he saying he is constantly singing in calm measure this bright sky is filled with the chant while it's coming from there is attracted now while is he he is in paradise home and then he's coming down here he has crossed the border line and is stepping into the mortal region from the immortal into the mortal region and then the poet is telling us as if he was kind of simply wandering roaming in the skies aimlessly going here there and all that thing chanting 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 and then you see but as he was roaming there in the skies he suddenly saw the earth there and got kind of attracted by the earth and therefore he decided to change his course and come down to earth i mean that is the essence which is attracted i mean as we are speaking but basically it is a kind of deliberate move of narad attracted by the golden samara that lay beneath the beneath him like a glowing bowl so as if the earth is a bowl in the inverted form and what you are seeing is the upper part of it you see that lay beneath him like a glowing bowl tilted upon a table of the gods tilted slightly tilted because the earth is moving on a tilted axis 
and you are seeing it like that. See. So there is a kind of an astronomy also there. Treated upon the table of the gods. The table of the gods here is of course the old shaped table. The path the earth traces in the sky is elliptical. So it is an elliptical table, it's the old shape, you see. To catch turning as if moved round by an unseen hand. To catch the warmth and blaze of a small sun. The earth is constantly moving around the sun as if it is the moment to seize the light, the warmth, the joy of the sun itself, small sun. Luckily, it is small sun. Otherwise, earth would, have, would not have existed. It would have got burnt, you see. Yes, you see. Treated upon a table of the gods, turning as if moved round by an unseen hand, to catch the warmth and blaze of a small sun. He passed from the immortal happy paths to a world of toil and quest and grief and hope. To the ruin, to a cease of gain of death and life. And life. So now he has shown the contrast already. You see, he is in brilliant peace, the world's above, and now he is entering into the world of toil and quest and grief and hope. And see the beat also of it to a world of toil and quest and grief and hope. See, the, the, the meter is going along with that beat, you see. A world of toil and quest and grief and hope. Now this is uh, 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 essentially from the medical sense. To a world, it is an epic, short, short, long. To a world, and the other four feet are amps, short, long, of toil and quest and grief and hope. So short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, four times. See. To the room of a cease or game of death and life. So he has come now where there is a constant skirmish between death and life here and he is entering into the mortal world, into the mortal pain, you see. Now, unfortunately, in this line, to these rooms of a cease or game of death and life, the advice edition has something different to the rooms of the seesaw game of death with life. Of death with life. As if the importance is given more to death with life, you see. See, but the balance, seesaw balance is not maintained there, you see. Death with life, you see. <laughs> it doesn't tell, you see. So I will go by these lines, game of death and life. Now actually death and life is uh, significant also. It is actually death which is promoting life. It is death which makes life grow, make progress. Because of death that our progress is possible. Constantly we are able to so, in the present circumstances, in our present state of consciousness, death is helping us to make more and more progress. Death and life. You see. Later on, uh, we have a very similar description. Savitri tells, until now, my understanding was that death was all, sorry, life was all, and I did not know the meaning of death. Now I understood the meaning of death and how. 142. Point nine, three. Life only was my blind attempt to love. Earth saw my struggle. Heaven, my victory. All shall be seized, transcended. They shall kiss, casting their veil before the marriage fire, the eternal bridegroom and eternal bride. In fact, the meaning becomes clearer if you go to the previous sentence. 142.92 For now, at last, I know beyond all doubt the great stars burn with my unceasing fire. Savitri tells that stars are burning because of my fire, because of unceasing fire of mine. 
the grey stars burn with my unceasing and life and death are both equal mate life and death are both equal mate it is life and death they are feeding the fire in the stars because of that both are there simultaneously and then live until now i did not realize that until now i, I did not realize that now i realize that the stars are burning and the fuel for the stars are life and death until now i was saying life only was my blind attempt to love only with life i was loving the whole creation but i see that death also has some role to play in that love something is there in that decision and therefore here again to the room to the seas of game of death and life death and life constantly it goes on you see mm. so while crossing the region of large and lustrous air narad must have been, must have seen many wonderful things coming from world to earth notice many marvels he must have admired them loved them appreciated them also but sun inscrutable urge draws him especially towards this golden summer earth he is wandering in the sky and there are marvels everywhere but there was something inscrutable something special in the earth and it is that which attracted him we are not told yet that it was with a specific intention that he had undertaken the journey narad he says that in spite of the condition of toil and quest and grief and hope in this mortal world in spite of the constant tussle between death and life that has been going on here since long he chooses to live the happy past of the immortals past of those who know not the hard slog and anguish and woe that we the mortals bear but he is still the chant of joy in spite of that condition of chant of joy because the earth is all the while making an effort to catch the warmth of a small sun there is a joy in that the earth is making an effort aspiring to catch the warmth of the sun and therefore his joy is also as if to escape the shadow of white death of the supreme himself he shadow is there it is that as if to escape the sun is there the whole thing is bright to escape that thing he wants to go and kind of merge into the sun to make the sun how ever small it be at the center of all our activities is one of the finest things that one can be occupied with in it is a bright meaning of the very existence itself to catch the sun now when you are moving in the circle you can move in the circle by constantly falling to make, to go in the circle you have to constantly fall you are cycling taking a curve you are constantly falling <laughs> so you are taking left turn you are leaning on the corner on the left side constantly like that you have to keep on falling so in order to maintain the circle the, the orbit the earth is constantly falling towards the sun constantly you see <laughs> well that is the law of physics also what is called the centripetal force is there it is uh, pulling the earth towards the center you see <laughs> so then he has now from the silent bounds he has come to the mortal regions now he is coming into the across the intangible border of soul space from above he is coming from the immortal world the world of the soul from there now he is stepping into our earth across an intangible border of soul space he passed from mind into material things amid the inventions of the inconscient self and the working 
with a blind somnambulist force. This is a back sentence, <laughs> see, basically. Across the border, intangible border, we have already soul space, what we have got here, basically, uh, in the fourth, 14th cadre of the second book, the world soul. Nara is coming from the world soul, down below, you see. And he is coming from the world soul into the world of mind. He is transiting from the spiritual plane into the world soul, into the world of mind. And he is now coming from the world of mind where? Where you have only the inconscient being and the somnambulist nature. She is working here in the night, darkness. Somnambulist, as if she is walking to sleep, she is working in nature. And the inconscient being, a Chaitana Purusha, he has lost his consciousness, he is there. Now, this is a pair which appears everywhere, inconscient self and the somnambulist force, everywhere. It is in uh, many, many places in Savitri, we have got the combination of presence and power. Presence and power. Now, presence is the inconscient self, the inconscient being, a chetana, without any chetana, without any consciousness, a chetana purusha, as you say, you see. Inconscient self. But at the same time, he is also accompanied by his nature. And that nature is blind. She does not see what is happening in the darkness, but constantly she is working. It is because of her work that the whole process of evolution has begun. The inconscient self, the Achetana Purusha, the being, is only the support for her work. He provides the base for her work. And on that support, she does whatever has got to be done in his will. So the activity is carried out by nature, by prakriti, by force, as he says here. And the support for that activity, the ground for that activity is provided by being, self, Atman. So he is already introducing the metaphysical concept right in the beginning. Naral is now passing, coming from the world soul into the region where the inconscient being and the somnambulist power are working simultaneously. The universe is stepping into the world of ignorance here, into the lower regions, you see. In fact, the inconscient self and the somnambulist force are the counterparts of Sat and Chit. Sat, Sat, Chittananda, how is true? The first is Sat, that is the being or the transcendental soul, Sat, Chit, that is the dynamic force, activity, consciousness force, you see. It is they who have become in this world, this inconscient self and this somnambulist force. So it is, it is actually the chaya, the shadow of Sat, Chit itself down below into the void down below into the void. <coughs> As uh, we have seen earlier also many times, when the four powers separated from the divine source completely, then the horror of separation was seen in the void. In the mother used this phrase, horror of separation. And in order to heal what had happened, correct the mistake of separation, the divine himself plunged into the void. Now, divine himself plunged into the void means Satchit has plunged into the void and became his op opposite. It became this so inconscient self and the somnambulist force. So, it is actually it is that plunge the divine in the inconscience which is now making things grow happen here. And that is now the story we will follow here. Having decided to visit the earth, <coughs> Narada prepares himself 
to undergo the necessary transitions. See, Narad is a spiritual being. His body is a spiritual body, purple forehead body, luminous body, and he wants to come to the earth. He has to take a physical body. So he is now preparing to undergo that transition of the spiritual body becoming the gross physical body. Having decided to visit the earth, Narad prepares himself to undergo the necessary transitions <coughs> from the heavens to the gods into the soul space. That is the first transition. Second transition is from mind into material things. Second transition. That is the road followed by him in this long journey. Narada. The domain of the cosmic self with all its stifled creations is traversed to enter into the modalities of the evolutionary earth. He has to traverse through all these regions and get into the mood, into the manner of things which are happening in the evolutionary earth. If, on the other hand, holy is the, the, is the Holy Spirit is, is, the, is his whiteness, if, on the other hand, uh, on the other side, is the Holy Spirit in his whiteness, if there are bright and beautiful worlds with their happy paths of superconscient delight, here, on the sphere of sorrows, are issues related to the inconscient self and the somnambulist force. On the other side, is the Holy Spirit who is pervading everything in this way. But here, the issues are connected with the somnambulist force and the blind somnambulist force and the inconscient being. Yeah, the transcendent sat and chit, the all supporting form, truth existent, and the dynamic consciousness force had down below here their counterparts working at the inconscient self, a Chaitanya Purusha, and the somnambulist force, the half blind, half seeing nature, Andha Prakriti. Andha means blind. Andha Prakriti, nature. This work is a travel, is full of grief and suffering, is subject to the dubious workings of fate and time and ignorance and death of this somnambulist force and in the inconscient being. The heavenly visitor, that is Narad, is presently stepping into this sphere. So already a great transition has, a great change has occurred in Narad. The heavenly spiritual body is gone, world soul, mental being, now is stepping into the inconscient regions. Already a considerable change has taken place in the mood of the divine singer. What he was singing, the chant of glory of Lord Vishnu, he has now change has taken place. In the next moment, this change deepens further when he identifies himself with the dumb spirit. He is undergoing change. Not only he, the change is under taking place in him, but also he is identifying himself with a dumb spirit here, the inconscient being here, with matter, with the material world. He is identifying. He is not only seeing another thing. He is identifying, he is becoming one with that thing. And thus alone, he could make the world that he is carrying with him relevant to it. When he identifies himself with this creation, then the message which he brings, the power which he brings, becomes pertinent, not until then. So now that this is kind of a transition which is taking place in the case of uh, Nara's journey down below. Below him, circling. Now, how does the change take place? This is the most important thing and very deep also. We'll first quickly see it and we'll go into more details later on. See. While Narada is coming down here, he has already seen the changes in the different worlds. He is now identifying himself with the inconscient creation here. And his spiritual body is going to be a physical, gross physical body. 
how that physical body is formed, how the spiritual body becomes the, sorry, the spiritual body becomes the gross physical body. That is the process which is quickly indicated here in this one long sentence here, what we are going to follow now, you see. Below him circling burn the myriad suns. Naras is coming down here and he sees everywhere myriad suns. Now, these myriad suns had therefore a relevance with the change which is going to occur in his body. They are the ones who are going to govern the transition from the spiritual body to the material body, the myriad suns. And now he is quickly describing the whole process of transition. He bowed the ripples of the etheric sea. Narada is coming, change is taking place. Bowed the ripples of the etheric sea. Mask, ether only. And it is in the ocean and there are waves on that. So when Narada is passing through that ether, through that ocean, he is feeling the impact of those waves on his physical body. That is the first thing you see. He feels the impact of that thing on his body. You see. He in fact, I will go in more detail later on, but let me first quickly run. He bowed the ripples of the etheric sea. A primal air brought the first joy of touch. That is the second step. From ether, he has come to air. And there, what is say? A secret spirit drew its mighty breath, contracting and expanding this huge world in its formidable circuit through the void. Let me first read the whole sentence, then we will come back again to that. The secret might of the creative fire displayed its triple power to build and form its infinitesimal way spars weaving dance, its nebulous units grounding shape and mass, magic foundation and pattern of a world is radiant bursting into the light of stars. And then the third, fourth thing is, he felt a sap of life, a sap of death into solid matters, dense communion, plunging and its obscure oneness of form he shared with the dumb spirit identity. Now, this is a very sweeping transition, very rapid transition. Essentially, what we are here are the five elements, Pancha Mahabhuta, as we call them, five elements. Sky, ether, then air, then fire, then water and then earth, becoming more and more, more and more, more and more dense. Or the uh, Sanskrit terminology, Akash, Vayu, then comes Agni, Tejas, then comes water, Apas, and then comes Prithvi. Akash, Vayu, Tejas, Apas and Prithvi. So these are the five elements which are described here. And you see that they become grosser and grosser, thicker and thicker, more and more solid in, in the treatment. So uh, these are the metaphysical elements which are given to us by the Sankhya philosophy. Sankhya philosophy of materialization of the spiritual is based on this point. The, what are the five elements? These are the five elements. And uh, uh, this is a very ancient knowledge. It is there uh, in the Vedas, it is there in the Gita, it is there in all the scriptures also. And Shivendu gives great details of this process in the life divine. He describes how the material creation came 
out of the spiritual, you see. In the life divine, there is a chapter there, you see, basically, you see, connected with that. And uh, uh, this is what we are here rapidly indicated here. The transition from the spiritual to the material is what is being described here through all the five, from Akash, then Vayu, then Agni, Tejas, then Apas, water, and then Prithi. In fact, even in Greek philosophy, there are four elements. They speak of four elements. The fifth is called the quint essence. Fifth essence, you see. <laughs> fifth essence, which is not mentioned specifically. But that fifth element here is Akash, ether. Other four are known there. What you call wind, then fire, then water, and then earth. These are the Greek elements, you see. In Plato, for each element, there is a geometrical form. Air is like this, water is like this. There is some geometrical forms are there given by Plato. So these, these are there constantly. Now, okay, let us re, uh, see this thing. Naras, subtle spiritual body, now starts undergoing a change towards more and more gross form. He has, to, he has to come in flesh and blood and walk into the palace. So he's becoming thicker and thicker, grosser form. The intention is to identify himself with the mortality's cumbersomeness. What we have got here, you see. This he does by the process of the Sankhya material creation. Below him, he sees a myriad suns, each sun pouring its creative energy into luminous generative substance, each sun. Then he takes a deeper plunge by projecting the higher nature into the lower universal nature. This is your lower universal nature, you see. Higher nature is spiritual nature, from that into the sun. By successfully utilizing the five elementary conditions of ether, air, fire, water, earth, heavier and heavier forms through the subtle to the gross physical are assumed. In the last stage, plunging further deep down, he identifies himself with the down spirit in communion with solid matter. In solid matter, he finds that the spirit itself has identified with matter. And Narada also identifies with that. Matter in a state of obscure oneness of forms means undifferentiated matter. Undifferentiated matter. It is one, but there are no obvious, there are no uh, entities as such they receive. A totally, a totally undifferentiated, un unevolved state of material existence. Although this is a state of indeterminateness, it is yet the spirit's state accepted for the purposes of bringing out through a long and fruitful process divine determinates. Why it has become inconscious? Why it has become indeterminate? Out of the whole process of evolution, the determinates appear. Objects appear, names and forms appear, characters appear. It is for that purpose it has become, so to say, characterless, featureless, blank, without any content in it. And out of that, the contents have to arrive for that purpose. And later on, of course, the contents have to become the divine contents. Now, at the moment, they are in the field of ignorance and inconscience. And therefore, these contents have to eventually become numerous contents, you see. To give rise to the multiplicity of shining forms in the aspect of material manifestation. The whole purpose of this creation is eventually there should be the divine manifestation, material manifestation. But how do you do that thing? You become nothing first. You become indeterminate first. You become blank. And out of that blank, you start gathering things and then build up slowly, slowly, slowly evolving forms. And that is the whole process of evolution which is taking place. So that is the purpose behind it. And the dumb spirit has accepted that condition. 
Narad now had uh, uh, sort of identified himself with that dumb spirit while he's coming down. Now, there is uh, one more uh, point which is important. And uh, here, this part of the description of fire. The secret mind of the creative fire displayed its triple power to build and form. Its infinitesimal ways past waving dance, its nebulous units grounding shape and form, uh, shape and mass, magic foundation and pattern of the world, its radiant bursting into the light of stars. Now he speaks here of triple power to build and form, triple power. Three powers of Agni, of Tejas. And what are the three powers? One is way spark. The second is nebulous units. And the third is radiance bursting into the light of the stars. These are the three uh, uh, powers of Agni. Now, apart from this one, uh, the names which Shivanu has given to the triple fire elsewhere are first is Saura Agni, second is Vidyuta Agni, and the third is Jala Agni. Three forms Saura Agni, Vidyuta Agni, and Jala Agni. Pardon me? So, yeah, and now Eric comes there. Yeah. Saura, Vidyuta, and Jala. Saura means solar fire. Solar. Vidyuta, lightning. Lightning. And Jala is heavy, solid. These are the three status of Agni, Saura Agni, the solar fire, and then uh, lightning with due to fire. Each is a character by itself. Saura Agni, in the nuclear physics, you have got the whole thing as Saura Agni. The, the fire which burns in the sun is a nuclear fire. The fusion reaction which is going on, that is the Saura Agni. The fusion reaction which goes on, in the stars, that is the Saura Agni. Fusion of lighter elements coming together and becoming heavier elements. Hydrogen getting converted into helium. That is what's constantly what is going on in the sun. There is hydrogen and when they have four hydrogen atoms combined together, they form a heli helium nucleus, you see. And in that process, the excess mass which are there with the four hydrogen atoms, that goes in the form of energy. That is the fusion reaction which takes place. So that he calls it the Saur Agni. And the, the Vidyut, the lightning, that is what happens in the atom, not in the nucleus, but in the atom. When the electron turns from one orbit to the other, the light which is flashing out, that is the with Jyotra. The transition will take place. Let's see with Jyotra. And Jala is the gross fire. So here, basically, the secret might of the creative fire, creative fire, that is important. It is constantly creating here. Triple power to build and form. It is that is what's constantly building here. And waste pass, one aspect. Shape and mass, another aspect. And bursting into the light of the stars is the third aspect of the fire. So, in a very uh, 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 quickly, he had described the three states of Agni here in that process. Now, this uh, the description of the three states of Agni, Saura, Vidyut, and Jalagni, Shivanu has given. in one of his conversations before he withdrew from outer context. 
on 24th November 1926, he used to meet the disciples who were around with him. And at that time, Pavitra, he used to ask questions to Shivendu about certain scientific matters about science. And there, he describes these three states of Agni. Saura, Vidyuta, and Jalagni to Pavitra. And fortunately, Pavitra has recorded the whole conversation, and it is there which was the seed activity. He has recorded the whole conversation. Yeah. Huh? It was around 1924 or so. What do you think? Actually, in my book, uh, uh, that whole thing is given also. Nara's arrival at Madhura. What we are having here. Uh, those few lines here, there are five chapters <laughs> in that book describing the transition of the material, uh, the physical trans transition, creation by the Sankhya process, you see, the whole process. There, uh, the whole conversation is there. So there are, uh, uh, on this center, and there are five chapters in this book. So uh, you can read them. <laughs> A talk with Shrebindu, page 96. Yeah. Here. Pavitra, he, ah, Pavitra. Huh, he, he, he has given all that thing to Pavitra, you see. He had asked this question and uh, he has luckily recorded. In fact, I have given here, this is the record of a talk Pavitra had with Shri Huh? In writing. In writing. He, he has written down. He has written down. No, no. I mean, Shri was explaining. Later on, he went to his room and he wrote it down. Uh, we don't know whether Shevindu has seen what he had written. That we can't see. But it is there. Uh, this is the record of a talk Pavitra had with Shevindu. Pavitra was a French disciple of the master who had his education in Paris. The talk is dated 8th May 1926. 20, yeah, sorry. Eight, huh? Yeah, yeah, over mind. Yeah, before the Siddhi. A few months before that, you see. Then, of course, all the contest laws, you see. Eight May. Given before the complete retirement of Shevindu, etc. It, it first appeared, etc. So, this is, this is the talk here. And verbatim, whatever he has reported is completely produced here. And there, uh, Shevindu mentions while talking about the Sankhya philosophy, what we are doing here, he says that science, physics has come to the stage of Agni. He has come to the stage of Agni. All the discoveries of science has come to the stage of Agni. And it is entering into the region of Vayu. He says, uh, uh, he says it is entering into the region of Vayu. Yeah, from below. Science advanced to the stage of Agni it is entering into the region of Vayu. Now, Vayu is the principle of interaction of object with object. One object is here. How do they interact, etc. Vayu is the thing which gives rise to interaction between objects. And when you see the laws of physics today, these pursuits of physics, bosons, particles, etc., etc., we are talking about that, they are the intermediaries between the physical objects. And therefore, really, we are in the world of uh, Vayu now, from that point of view, see. We are, I mean, what Shivlu said in quantum 19... Quantum physics. Huh? Quantum, quantum physics. Quantum yeah. physics, Quant yeah. yeah. Latest quantum discoveries are in that direction, you see. Quantum electrodynamics, they are in that direction, you see. So what he said in, 18, in 1926, we are already realizing it here, you see. And he says that beyond that, of course, is the world of Akash, ether. Physics has to go even beyond that, Akash. That is, of course, the figure speaking. So this is the Sankhya process by which uh, Narad has come down here in the reverse direction. Because he is already in the spiritual body. He has to take now the gross and gross body, you see, and then come down in a physical form here by the reverse process. We are climbing up from Prithi up to Akash. You see. He's coming below here. Now, 
here is a discussion but how exactly it is done of that there is no recipe there is no record there is no textbook available that we can follow and do those things accomplish those things you see that is not there you see Uh, that textbook is not there if that textbook were there then perhaps the process of physical transformation which the mother was doing all along would have quickened you see but she has to work out the textbook she has to work out the textbook the physical transformation that thing is not available in physically this much is only known that this is the condition in which we live here and how this will happen separately that is no now when narad is therefore coming down here he is coming in this manner mother says as i said earlier also this process of materialization of the spiritual being is a very painful process very difficult and painful process the spiritual person taking a physical body is very painful process and very few know that process and even after knowing that thing it is not that they will be happy to undergo such a transition and come in a physical form who will take the pain of all that kind of a thing you see for, for what again you see but here is narad and i think in that is his greatness narad's greatness that is his greatness it is painful process difficult process he knows the process and he is willing to undergo the transition transition in the immediate context to carry the word of faith to savitri to carry the word of faith to savitri in other words he is really playing an extremely important role in the scheme of things there to deliver the word of faith to savitri yes he is coming here with all that kind of a preparation background you see he is coming here to deliver the word of faith to savitri that is perhaps the immediate way of acknowledging his mission why is coming here for that purpose you see but more than that there are other things also when narad comes here he knows the gravity of the whole situation the issue savitri is going to fight with death she has to be fully prepared to counter an enemy a foe like death so when he is coming here and meeting savitri he is preparing her yogically inwardly preparing her soul to meet that eventuality that situation he is also kind of putting his force in her soul by which she will prepare yogically to get ready for the task he has to do you see there so that is also an aspect of naras visit why is coming here and the third aspect is savitri who has taken the physical birth the divine shakti who has taken the physical birth to be close to the divine shakti to the divine incarnation is an exceptional privilege an exceptional joy an exceptional moment he does not want to miss that to be in the company of savitri the divine incarnate it is as if to offer his worship to her that he is undertaking that kind of a transition and coming down here he is willing to that thing to be in the company of savitri the incarnate divine she is there in front of you and she would he would like to be in your presence you see that is the greatness of savitri of of uh, narad ji so he is doing all the three roles simultaneously he is bringing the word of faith he is preparing savitri to do her yoga and as his own as an individual himself he would like to offer himself to the divine power the consciousness yes this is in your service that i am doing all that thing 
So he has no hesitation, no complaint to undertake such a painful process of transition from the spiritual to the mortal. Yes, it is worth doing. You see. <laughs> so he does it also and he comes here see, to see. You see. So that is the background, so to say, of Nara's transition, taking this form and appearing in front of uh, Sabitri, you see. In fact, he is doing a very great thing. And the whole thing is so perfectly done, so well timed that Savitri is about to arrive to the palace. She has not yet come to the palace. In another hour, she will be in the palace. But Narada is already present there in the company of her parents. And then comes Savitri. So he has timed his whole visit in such a way that he is there exactly one hour before the arrival of Savitri there, you see. So all, all that thing is, is, are the dynamics of the spiritual life and he is the master of that. He organized everything. He has timed how long it will take, etc., etc., whatever it will be, you see. And he comes here that way. Now, while he is coming down and undergoing this transition, he is constantly chanting the song of the creator, Narada song. He is the bhakta, devotee of Vishnu. And everywhere he sees only the delight of his Vishnu, 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 everywhere. And wherever he goes, he will keep on chanting his name, Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. He says it constantly. And while he is therefore coming, he sings five songs. Narada is singing five songs while he's coming from paradise and entering Ashwapati's palace. And we have got here the five songs, one after the other. But before that, Narada is saying, he behaved the cosmic being at his task. His eyes measured the spaces, gazed the depths. His inner gaze, the movement of the soul. He saw the eternal labor of the God and looked upon the life of beasts and men. So the cosmic being who is at work here, what is he doing? He is carrying on the evolution. He is carrying on the work of the gods. The labor of the gods is here to take forward this creation on the path of evolution. He has arrived, that evolution has arrived to the stage of, stage of beasts and men. The cosmic being has already arrived, organized the whole thing, that man has arrived on the scene in the whole process. And Narada is seeing the whole process as moment. And in this sentence, he behaved, his eyes measured, his inner gaze, he saw, he looked. See, all are actions of sight, of eye, of sight, you see. He behaved the cosmic being. His eyes measured the spaces. His inner gaze, the movements. He saw the eternal labor and looked upon the life. You see how every aspect of sight is mentioned here, you see, basically. And who is doing? the cosmic being, the Virata Purusha. Here are all functions of sight. Nara sees the things with which his great Vishnu is busy, that cosmic being. What is he busy with? Well, this is what he is busy with. He as a cosmic being or Virata Purusha he is at the task of upholding the order of the worlds. Vishnu is the sustainer of this creation. Sustainer. He is the sustainer of the creation. Gods are powers of light. What are gods? They are the powers of light. Devas are constantly at work to help and promote the evolving soul of man. That is the function. In opposition to the function of Asuras and hostile forces to pull them back away from the divine. 
gods are always helping the soul of man to reach the divine. If the spirit has taken the plant into the inconscious, these powers aid his upward ascent. These powers means these gods. They help him upward ascent. In the entire process, the soul is a well-designed nodus, and time and space are the fields of its vast operation. Of man evolving is the nodus. That is the focal point. It is from that direction. And all that happens in space and time, in the cosmic dimensions, you see, space and time. Not the transcendental, but the universal and the individual aspects have a specific connotation as far as Nara's present visit is concerned. He is not concerned what happens in paradise, he is concerned what is going to happen in this creation here, in space and time. His observations have implications connected with that, with what is going to happen here in this creation. Given in swift and suggestive manner, we already have here the picture, the travail of evolution. The cosmic being bringing the whole thing up to man. He has traced in four lines the entire course of evolution, so to say. He indicated that thing. These five lines form a beautiful poetic essay a vivid picture in swift details, which is artistically subtle also. So he sees now what the cosmic being is busy with, and then he is approaching the earth, coming down, the cosmic being he has seen now, a chain now fell upon the single smooth. He is entering into the mortal world slowly, slowly. He is entering the mortal world slowly, slowly. Yeah. A change now fell upon the singer's mood. A rapture and a pathos moved his voice. He sang no more of light that never wanes, and oneness and pure everlasting bliss. He sang no more the deathless heart of love. He chanted the hymn of ignorance and fate. Because the change has taken place now. So that is the first song he is singing. He, his first song is a song of ignorance and faith. It is not, not a song of joy, of happiness, of everlasting bliss elsewhere in his heaven. That is what he was singing. But now the change has taken place and he has started singing. Because as he approaches earth, he is singing now the song of hymn of ignorance and faith. It is a hymn. It is in praise of ignorance and faith he is singing. Ignorance and faith have a role to play, have a function to do, you see. And therefore, it is a hymn also, stuti, as we call it, stuti, praise of ignorance and faith. What is it for? Praise, you see. Now, a change now fell upon the singer's mood because he is transiting now from the glorious world into the ignorant world. Um, his song is changing, you see, basically. A rapture and a pathos, so both of them are now here. Simultaneously, happiness and grief moved his voice. He sang no more of light that never wanes in the heaven where he lives. Light never wanes. There is no night at all there. And oneness and pure everlasting bliss. That's the identity in heaven there. He sang no more the deathless heart of love. That love which is immortal. Death. He is not singing now anymore that thing because he is coming into the mortal world. The travel begins here. Naral is entering into a transient and sorrowful world. Transient and sorrowful world. Transient, that is, which is changing constantly, subject to time. Sorrowful, full of grief and all that. This is a phrase from Gita. Transient and sorrowful. Anityam asukham. Anitya is transient. Sorrowful, asukha. Anitya means which is not nitya, which is not permanent. Asuka, which is not sukha, which is not happiness. So that phrase is basically from the Gita. Anityam asukham. Word. No more the delight of existence in which he lives in heaven. Narada was singing the, the song of bliss until now. In the, it is the pathos that grows, that now gets into his song. 
because he is entering the earth region. Pethas because here month follows gloom stricken month and year wakes to the grey sorrow of another cyclic year. This is what happens in our life you see. Here is only the unsteady light, light that waxes and wanes, becomes now bright and now dim. This is what happens in our case. The heart of love, if it is there, if you have a heart of love, if it is there, wanes and waxes and uh, 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 yeah, uh, it uh, continues to die. It is the play of cosmic ignorance and it is the uncertain working of Mother Nature as fate. By this one. They seem to decide the future of this mortal creation. Ignorance and fate. Never to these questions travel Narad in paradise. When he is there in paradise, the question of uh, fate and doesn't arise at all for him, you see. So that is the first song. He's, the first chant is ignorance and fate. First song of Narada. The greatness of ignorance and fate. It is a hymn. It is uh, making things grow. Evolution is in the domain of ignorance. But it is a progress. It is a progress. Now that thing has to happen in knowledge, which is a different story. But this itself is a progress. And therefore, there is a praise for that also, you see. He sang the name of Vishnu and Bhav. Obviously, he is Lord. Now he speaks of name. He has taken a form. He has taken a shape. He has taken kind of a character, person. He is not like Vishnu. And the birth. Because it is in the birth now that is going to happen here. Not the immortal life over there, but Saikutsapa. And joy and passion are the mystic world. And how the stars were made and life began and the mute region stirred with the dumb, with the throb of the soul. So that is the second song Narada is singing. And yet we feel that there is the feeble querying of the soul in spite of all that thing. There is a palpitation. And we see a brighter glimmer of birth itself, which could be the birth of the divine individuals. That is what has to happen. The divine individuals have to be born. Each individual has to be an individual, but the character should be a divine character. Not of the nameless Vishnu, nor of the still unnameable Krishna. Unnameable is beyond named Vishnu, the non-manifest Vishnu, that is unnameable. The manifest Vishnu is the name Vishnu. He is not saying that Vishnu, but his name, that is his qualities in manifestation, numina, in flesh and blood in this world. That is Vishnu. That is what he is going to sing. That is the theme of sing. It has the theme of the birth of the divine individuals. He is singing of birth. That, yes, from here the divine individuals can be born. The material sky, in spite of his thick and frightening night, is filled with countless stars, and there appears hope like the weak, tentative early dawn of life. The name of Vishnu, though somewhat hesitantly, begins to enter the song of the dark beginnings of things, and there is a mystic joy. See, you are not fully accepting the name of Vishnu. There is a little hope, possibility. The rustle of the happy moment is felt while he's coming down, you see. <laughs> you can see he is felt, you see. The trade of his silent feet in the expected corridors of time seems to bring the promised birth closer to us. When Narada is singing now this song of name of Vishnu and the birth, then the promised birth is appearing closer. The evolving advance is pursued beyond beasts and men. The march of destiny is gathering mass and momentum. becoming more and more definite, more and more perceptible. Then the next song, 
he sang the inconscient and his secret self. As he's coming down now, see? He's going. He sang the inconscient and his secret self. His power omnipotent, knowing not what it does. See, secret self, what, what is what I said? Being, the inconscient being, and his power, it does not know what it is doing. Now he's singing that song. All the same thing, without will or thought or sense, is blind, unerring, occult mystery. You see, although that force is blind, although the being is silent, quiet, not doing anything, yet there is something unerring in his work. From nothing, matter has to arise and has arise as a reason. From matter, life has to arise and it has arrived. So it is honoring from life, man, mind has to arise and it has arrived. So that blind energy, that power, omnipotent, knowing not what it does, some impulse is there which is driving it on the right path and carrying on through power. You can, they have arrived here, blind, unnerving, occult mystery. You don't know how it has happened. But it has definitely happened. And love that broods within the dim abyss. At the bottom of the whole thing is the divine love which is present. It is because the presence of the divine love at the bottom of the whole thing that things are right. In the dim abyss, that is there is there is what Satyavan is there. In the void, the divine has plunged and taken that seat, that position in the dim abyss. Who is there? Love. And Mother says, the name by which it is recognized is Satyavan. In the story, in Slavish, love that broods within the dim abyss is there. And then the next song, and where the answer of the human heart and death that climbs to immortality, death that climbs to immortality. That is the ascension of death. That is the prospect of death to immortality. Death has to become immortal. And that is what the divine being here in the cosmic is doing here. Death has to climb to the stage of immortality. And waste the answer to the human heart. Narada sings of the bright possibilities that are on the verge to emerge out of the present light of darkness. These are the possibilities they had to come out to the darkness. He sings about the inconscient self and the somnambulist force, what we have said earlier. But now, shaping our will and thought and sense, our will, the physical, our thought, the mental, our sense, the vital. It is that which is being shaped here. The physical, the mental, the vital. In it is the inbuilt infallibility. It must happen unerringly. All this must go on. Though it is the blind, occult working. Its omnipotence and its omnipresence are active their own way. Of their own way, they are active here. They are not motivated by somebody else. They are self-born. Its omnipotence and omnipresence are active in their own way, but without awareness. Well, because they have taken the station. Satchit has taken that position. The operations are a blind shot. Obviously, they don't know. But still honoring. But there is a hidden wisdom behind them. Death with the element of birth Entering into the process is seen climbing towards immortality. From darkness to light, from death to immortality. The Sanskrit prayer is Tamaso Ma Jyoti Tamaso from darkness, Jyoti light. Let me go from darkness to light. Tamaso Ma Jyoti Mrityur Ma Amrutam Mrityur means from death to Amruta. Immortality. That is the moment. So that is the celebration here. Light from light, I'm sorry, not to light and from death to immortality. Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya, mrityur ma amrutam gamaya. That is the celebration. 
this ascending movement has become possible because all the sacrifice love made long ago the divine sacrifice himself and plunge into the void and station himself there therefore this movement has become possible without that it would not have happened because the sacrifice love made long ago at the zero hour marking the beginning of the evolutionary process that is the zero hour you see the cosmic being's task the hem of ignorance and fate the trap of the soul would then mean the assurance of a marvelous creation coming out of the womb of darkness and that is what narada is singing <laughs> and then next song he sang of the truth that cries from night to blind deep the truth that cries from my there is a truth there is crying please help me please truth satyavan is lying there he is in the grip of death and he is saying please save me <laughs> and he sang of the truth that cries from night to blind deep and the mother wisdom hid in nature's bed her love for his creation it is that love of the mother nature which is carrying us forward and the idea that through her dumbness work idea yes this is what should happen this is my image of things to happen here it is in the darkness therefore it is only an idea in the divine it is always the real idea in the divine it is always the real idea here it is only the idea real idea stands for super mind so what it does it will achieve here is only the idea and the idea that through her dumbness were and a miracle of a transfiguring hand because she doesn't know the full be miracle a transfiguring hand of light that slumbers in the stone and sun and mind subliminal in mindless life and the consciousness that weighs in beast and men so it has come all the way to that point all the way in the song of man he sang of the truth this is the song of of evolution the cry of the truth is the cry of the involved being trying to emerge out of the unseen depths of the night the wise dynamic force with the love and concern for this truth and the working of the idea though alienated from the real are both present in the very best of nature indeed evolution out of the inconscious is the cry of this truth what is truth what is evolution after all is the cry of this truth of this truth with a needed force and idea working behind it the result of this high involvement the involvement of the truth idea force is the growth of consciousness which has presently come up to the human stage it has made this progress possible actually all this progress has taken place in the seemingly endless domain of ignorance yes all that has happened in the domain of ignorance you see but being the cry of the truth itself we shall proceed beyond the mental regions of ignorance and step into the vast of knowledge vast of knowledge brahat jnana brahat vijnana vast of knowledge this is in the very nature of things inevitable it has come up to here it has come up to this point not for nothing it is not going to stop here it has traced this path that is not the goal that's not the end of the thing it has come to this point to proceed further from here onwards with the path of progress of in knowledge and then he sings another song he sang the glory and marvel still to be born the evolution has come up to man but what about things are yet to be born now narad had nash vision that intuition of things yeah a new glory has to be born has to take birth he sang the glory and marvel still to be born of godhead showing off at last his veil yes the supreme has put on the veil of ignorance of inconscience that has to go away now and 
the glory, new glory has to be here, here, has to take birth. A body is made divine and life made bliss. So Narad has already in his song, in his intuition, in the scheme of things, the knowledge of the divine body housing the divine bliss. The divine body is the only thing which can hold the divine bliss. And that has had, he sang with glory and marvel still to be born. And still to be born, therefore, in the context of Savitri. Nara's visit is for that purpose, still to be born in the context of Savitri. It is connected with her work. And therefore, the urgency, the relevance of his coming to Madra. It is in this context that Savitri has to do her work. And therefore, Narada feels compelled to come here. A body is made divine and life made bliss. Immortal sweetness clasping immortal mind. Heart sensing heart, thought looking straight at thought, and the delight when every barrier falls, and the transfiguration, and the ecstasy. That is the whole purpose of the song. So all these five songs are ascending to this particular song, the song of transfiguration and ecstasy. That is the culmination of all his singing. So he is singing one above the other song climbing up gradually to this particular song and the transfiguration and the ecstasy. So Narada also has planned all his songs in a very systematic manner. First the song of this, first then this song and ultimately this is this song. The evolution marches on, the dreadful abysms of ignorance are left behind, the broad vistas of truth, knowledge stretch invisibly on. The veil is getting thinner and thinner. The splendid possibility of divine glory living in matter's house has been unequally asserted. The song of transfiguration and ecstasy, that is what he is asserting. That is what he is asserting. The life divine shall be real in the divine's birth on earth. There is harmony and sweetness and joy. The involved spirit has triumphed over the obduracy of the physical nature. In the divine multitudes, oneness is a victory of the spirit. This world and that world, they are not different. That oneness is established here only. Out of that arises a new and marvelous creation. Out of that oneness arises this new and marvelous creation. Sad thoughts have become sweet songs. The long suffering existence is now changing into a thing of beauty, is a joy forever. By the process of a wonderful poetic logic, with the swift running force of a narrative, revelatory with the power to realize what is revealed, the poet has accomplished the miracle of tracing the entire course of this vast evolution. See, in just few lines, the whole course and its culmination, he has brought down here completely, you see. Out of the inconscience and the obscurity of matter came first life and then mind. What is now expected is the glory and marvel of the divine birth. That is what is expected here. And the poet has brought the whole thing to this point to Nara's songs. The establishment of the name of Vishnu here, name, that is the manifestation. Name stands for manifestation of the divine. Such is the delightful song of Narad in the rasa, in the flavor, in the joy, in the taste of felicitous devotion. He is offering his bhakti to his Lord by singing the song of creation. And where it is going to go? Yes, my Vishnu will come and live in this mortal creation here. 
that is his desire that is his devotion this song has the entirety of sweetness to bring to joy bring joy to the hostiles who has stood too long in the way of the growth of consciousness the hostiles the adversary forces they have been standing across the path of this progress and this song has its entirety of sweetness joy to the hostile they also feel happy with the song which narada is singing all these five songs they are hearing and they feel happy our moment of redemption has come we shall be free that is the joy that is the happiness they are happy that they will soon be vanquished in the greatness of the spirit and that in its victory the horrendous task will be terminated they have undertaken a very difficult task for style by opposing they want the progress to go on but now it need not be by opposing it can be by complementing also opposing has a role in this condition that role is now getting fulfilled and therefore they feel happy and that in its victory the horrendous task the product of the dark in conscience shall be dissolved for good and they feel happy and therefore as he sang all this song and as he sang the demons wept with joy yes our moment of happiness has arrived the demons wept with joy forcing the end of the long dreadful task they had undertaken the dreadful task upon them now they are happy yes our job is over we we now live all this horrendous task and we can live always in the divine himself and as he sang the demons with joy so that is the power of the song you see that is the power of music also you see and the defeat for which they hoped in vain see there was no hero until now who could defeat them and they were hoping that somebody would arise and defeat them terminate their work defeat for which they hoped in vain and glad relief from their self chosen do they had taken upon themselves this task this do and return into the one from whom they came go back to the supreme and disappear into him yeah that is the transformation so but 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 they have a choice also at that point if you want to come and participate yeah but they are happy to go back their task is over they have come into the supreme and return into the one from whom they came in return it does not mean that they are dissolving themselves it does not mean that they are disappearing in do it one from whom they came the four powers which separated from the divine they are now happy look we are now going back from where we have come ंग <laughs> now the moment has arrived for them evolution need not have been a torturous painful process explain shevendu in one of his letters but then a dark possibility could have been there 
and it had to be exhausted. In the evolution, it could have been in the domain of light, but still a dark possibility could have been there also. We cannot rule out that possibility and that had got to be exhausted and therefore this whole process. But then a dark possibility could have been there and it had to be exhausted. In this many dimensional unfoldment of the divine delight, the infinity of inconscience had to be met in its full scope and operative might. Full scope should be given to inconscience. Then only your joy also becomes greater. In response to every descent that had occurred until now, it always threw answer antagonistically to distort it. The divine have come, but the king always got destroyed. If not to destroy it, Therefore, triumphing over it means establishing a greater delight in the mode of the very existence consciousness itself. In other words, that is the way of the divine to grow. How does the divine grow? This is how he grows. <laughs> that is how he expands. The demons now return into the one, into the supreme origin <coughs> from which they had come the bright womb of creation. Thus is prepared the hazardless way of, for evolution to grow from knowledge to greater knowledge. Once the demons have got transformed, then there are no hazard, there are no difficulties. But the progress does not stop with that. It is from knowledge to knowledge, higher knowledge. Means more and more potencies, the divine, they emerge, they come out into manifestation. That is the progress in knowledge. The miracle of reaching via ignorance the divine multitude to such a strange possibility that is what we see here this thing. And then we conclude this thing. He who has conquered the immortal to see. So that is how Narada is coming, singing all the song. Now he is reaching the destination, you see. <laughs> he who has conquered the immortal seed came down to men on earth the man divine. Now, he was conquered the immortal seeds. Narad was immortal. He was here on earth by his tapasya, by his sadhana. He conquered the seed of the immortals. He became the godhead, demigod. He became the demigod. And it is by that power he is seeing in Vishnu by his bhakti or whatever you want to call it. He is seeing Vishnu. And it is he, that kind of a person, down to men, to us, or man divine. The demigod, it is he who is coming, man divine. Obviously, it has to be man divine only. It cannot be superman divine. Naras has grown up from here, has become man divine. He is standing on the topmost level of this creation, but on the lower side, not on the other side. Therefore, he is still man divine. Because he is man, he can come. As I said earlier, Superman has no mechanism of coming down here. The process of transformation which Narada undergoes, the Sankhya process of transformation which Narada undertakes, that mechanism is not available for a Superman as yet. So he cannot come, he cannot come. But this man divine therefore can come, you see. Such is the happy significance of Nara's visit to Madra, to, Ash uh, to Ashwapati's palace. In his diamond haste, the way, see with the, what rapidity the whole description is flowing and his songs are moving. It follows the whole movement of creative delight in the surge from inconscience to the birth of a new world. Narad can accomplish such a feat because he is a hero and a warrior who has conquered the seed of the immortals. Who has conquered the immortal seed. He is a hero and a warrior who has conquered. By his yoga tapasya, done here on earth previously, 
he had attained the status of man divine. Indeed, it is such a being, such a man who presently comes foreseeing the new leap of evolution. He sees now a new world is opening out, a new door is opening out to the light, and therefore he comes. A decisive leap in his wonderful adventure. But this foreseeing is also connected with the work of Savitri. Obviously, it is in that whole context which is coming here, work of Savitri has to do here. He must hasten to Madhra with the word of faith and deliver it to her in time. In time. His spiritual sight and action in that world's dynamism go together. Word itself has the full power in it, but his action and his sight is that which is carrying out the power. The last sentence here. As might a lightning streak, how is this coming now down here? The way the lightning streaks, you see. Narada is jumping down into the earth. As might a lightning streak, a glory fell, nearing until the rapt eyes of the sage looked out on luminous cloud and strangely limb his face, a beautiful mask of antique joy, appearing in light, descended. Where rose King Ashopati's palace of wind? He sees the palace in front of him, appearing in light descended. Where arose King Ashopati's palace to the wind in Madra, flowering up in delicate stone? That is the description of Ashopati's palace, flowering up in delicate stone, gems and jewels and all that. Now we seeing from above that palace as if the pilot is seeing in front of him the landing strip, you <laughs> see, and he's about to land now, but he comes with the speed of lightning here. As mighty lightning streak, a glory fell nearing until the rapt eyes of the sage looked out on numerous clouds <coughs> and strangely limbed his face, a beautiful mask of antique joy. Appearing in light descended, where arose King Ashopati's palace of winds in Madra, lowering up in delicate soul. After a long journey from paradise to earth, Narad, the heavenly sage, now reaches his destination. He stations on the way where heaven, world soul, mind, material things, Earth. Here on the banks of Alakananda is the crown city of King Ashwapati, Madra, flowering up in dedicated stone. It is on one summer morning that Naras visits his place. He leaves it at noon. He comes here and at noon he leaves the place at noon. After meeting the royal family, and delivering the word of fate. He must time in here for about four hours. <laughs> yeah, he goes back afterwards. After. Yeah, he goes. He, his, mission, his mission is done. His task, his task is done. He goes back. 